Sup everybody, this is Carrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. What happens when you take a game based in the Viking times, throw in god skills, troll witches, knights armored to the teeth, and enough magic to make a died in Peter Jackson swoon? Well, you have Vikings Wolves of Midgard, a new hack and slash action RPG coming to you to pretty much you. right now for the PC on Steam for the discounted price of $33.99. Let's see how it fares going up against titles like Paths of Exile, Diablo, Grim Dawn, and the mighty quest for epic loot. Actually, now that I think about it, we should probably scratch that last one. As always, if you liked the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Vikings Wolves of Midgard, the world's crappiest home base, fearing another man's wood, and wizard tea bags. Graphics are up first. Okay, so listen, I am not sure any sword can take out a tree trunk sized log with a single swing, but goddammit, I do not want any game to ever not have that again. The sheer destructibility and downright Nabisco cracker structural strength of everything in this game world really does play right into the feel of the title, and the first time you basically run into an enemy's village and smash the shit out of everyone's home, it makes you feel like a kid in the sandbox kicking over other people's castles. And that's a thing you notice pretty much right away. The game really does revel in rolling out different environments and pitting you against unique setups throughout. For example, you can be sprinting along a beach, storm waves smashing into the rocks as lightning goes off, and then a troll climbs the cliff beside you and leaps into battle, while a goblin riding White Fang ran through a scary as shit filter sprints towards your eventual slot. Now, the overall effects and graphical presentation is excellent. The animation, on the other hand, leaves a bit to be desired, though, and it just doesn't really have the subtlety and movement and minutia that the other titles have. Though here there are some highlights, like powering through a massive snow wall in your Viking skivvies and leaving a trail of piled up powder behind you. Now, texture work and modeling are also fairly well done, though you are going to see some rough textures in some locations, and speaking of places of murder and mayhem, there are a good number of locations that you go to for the main campaign stories and then return to for hunts, which are basically ways to grind for items and upgrades. And what that means is one second you're thundering along a mud-packed road past deserted caravans, and the next you're up to your nuts in the stinking muck of a bog that's probably called Don't Swim With Your Mouth Open. And it's all married to a fairly dynamic background, with wind whipping through trees or small bushes and subterranean caves slightly shaking with the impact of your magical spells. Unfortunately, in some ways, this game sort of has its own virtual Ragnarok, as FPS can actually drop like a goddamn two-handed hammer, especially when effects or enemies start leaping into the fray, and while battle and events always look pretty good, they don't always run well. Even with the i7 at 4.2 and the 1080, frame rates were not locked at 60 FPS on Ultra, and co-op drops them even lower. Now, I think it's important to remember there's a lot of physics going on here and a hell of a lot of effects on top of that, so your mileage is going to vary, but setting some of these on medium and high might actually get that frame rate locked a little bit better for some of you folks out there. Very well done overall as a package, but I really wish the performance was a bit better, especially for what you're seeing. Sound, music, and voice. It is their vengeance, the harbinger of Ragnarok, the end of all things. Who would have thought that Ulfum village... Gary. The name's Scalagrim. Shipwright by trade and a damn fine one too, if I do say so myself. And of course, sound is up first in this trilogy, and when it comes down to it, the first time you Paul Bunyan your way through a series of archer tree stands and they all collapse to the ground, you will not be able to stop chuckling to yourself. It sounds amazing at times. But unfortunately, sometimes the positional audio cues are not the best. You know you need them to alert you to an enemy troll just off screen prepping to turn you into tomorrow's bow movement, but unfortunately there are a couple issues here and there and it just never felt as wide as it needed to be. Now when it came to effects, echo, reflection, reverb, and occlusion, they're all somewhat evidenced here, but but no matter the layering that I chose within the volume options, I never really got it completely dialed in. 
Now, when it comes to the actual samples and the different sounds within the game, they're good and bad. For example, the bow is awesome with different layers for string, limbs, and arrow, all represented throughout an entire shot. But while turning enemies into pincushions, you're gonna be running around, and that's when you're gonna hear the footsteps, which are next level bad. I don't know, maybe in fake fighting fantasy Viking land, it makes sense to record a 10 pound bag filled with pork rinds and potatoes slamming into a wall and calling it footsteps. I would have probably just recorded footsteps. When it comes down to it, I would say overall, some really good sounds here, some good effects, but there are some little issues that crop up regardless. And of course, as always, that's gonna bring us to music. Now, this is sort of all over the place again. We have tracks themselves that are fine, but once again, we have a game that seems to have the incredible drive to make you wonder if the music is ever actually gonna play. For long periods of time, it's just gonna be nothing with some light ambient chords playing in the background with no real tonal references to hook onto, and then suddenly horns and strings like someone just kicked the door in and found Valhalla. It's odd, and while I don't dislike it, once again, it just doesn't work to elevate the emotional elements within the title. And of course, that brings us to voice. Now, this is really hit and miss as well. While both the main voice actors for the male and female choices of the fighters does a fairly good job, especially when threatening enemies are questioning the moral capacity of troll witches, most everyone else has a serious case of their face being tired. Revel at what it sounds like when a bunch of people are brought in for an audition and didn't know the record button was pressed. It basically sounds like they're reading right from the script without looking up to see. Now that results in these weird humdrum affairs with a lot of the speaking points, these kind of moments that you sort of risk skipping, hoping it won't impact your game, even though you have some choices to make here and there. And the writing itself is unique, from moments where dudes are discussing who has the scariest wood to the one millisecond give a shit that folks take when a leader dies. Now, I get it. Some people are looking at this and going, voice, who cares about voice in a game like this? Well, apparently the developer did because they paid to put it in, but it's sort of like they got halfway through a race and then decided, you know what? I don't want to run anymore. So unfortunately, when it comes down to it as an entire package, not really the best voice work at all. And that brings us to gameplay and a bit about the story. You play as a hunter in a Viking town filled with a clan that's basically disgraced. You pick between a male or female and some various little cosmetic attributes like hair and jewelry, and you slap a name down on them and boom, you're in the game. Now, as it starts, you've returned to town to find it is under attack and burning down around your britches, and it's your job to find the leaders before they die. Now, during this time, you learn a number of the more basic moves in the game, like the roll skill that uses stamina, and of course, attacking and interaction with different locations. Unfortunately, by the time the tutorial's over, there's no one to lead but you, which is good because otherwise the game would be called, well, thanks for the tutorial level, but there's nothing else for me to do here. Instead, you're sent off on a pretty reaching adventure, loading into locations like any Diablo-style tie it'll basically turning yourself into a human blender and seeing how many small bits you can cut enemies into. And of course, that's gonna bring us to a bit about the combat. Now, this is a basic set. You have a main attack for the weapons and then upgraded skills later for additional attacks. You can use two-handed weapons, staves, dual-wielded one-hand weapons, and ranged. And all the while you're killing folks, you're accruing rage points, which sounds as awesome as it isn't. Because really, while almost every other game has done something like this, this has to be the first game that is so goddamn unimpressive in its special bar abilities. You really begin to wonder why you're even collecting them. Basically, rage just grants more power when you hit and more damage when you do that, flinging enemies a little farther, and the screen turns a funny color, and that's pretty much it. It doesn't really have any of that kinetic feel of almost any of the other titles in this genre that use a special building bar for kill streaks. Of course, kills rhymes with skills, and as you power mow through the forest to enemies, you level up at altars by dumping foes' blood into giant chalices and choosing things like damage, health points, and speed of attack bonuses all attributed to your character. But you also upgrade the altars themselves, and that's a very important aspect of the game because apparently Viking gods liked bigger and bigger rocks to make you worship at. Now, leveling up is also where you get god skills. Basically, the gods give out special boons, all of which have weapon types that are required to be in use, like Loki and dual wielding, Thor and hammers, Odin and staves, and so forth. Unfortunately, most are about as exciting as reading a book about skills. I mean, this is the first time I can remember a game where its higher level skills just don't look as good as basically running around with your normal weapon that looks like it's torn off at the front of a 57 Chevy and destroying people's homes with it. Also, the combo system in the game is incredibly shallow, which means with some weapons, it's gonna look like you're a looped movie of someone striking out their first time at bat. But here are some excellent parts, because there are. First, co-op. For instance, you can do private or public games, LAN or online, and take to the snowy cliffs of Lake Scary Monster with another player at any time. And then there's the various difficulty levels. Now, as you guys know, I test difficulty from the lowest level for those who like to telltale games their way through a title to those who want no saves, no quarter, and no chances given. 
Vikings has four difficulties and the curve seems pretty good. The game's not really based on stellar AI, that's not what these titles are about. And it's more about damage, taking chances, items, and luck away from the player. With a special Valhalla option also available here that basically means if you die, your save is gone. Now let's talk a little bit about control. First, for the most part, I actually love using the controller. It worked in so many ways, but I gotta be honest, for the most part, the inventory skills and other elements and menus were a bit cumbersome there. Also, there's a weird thing here. The roll skills attached to the right thumbstick and the map overlay is also attached to that thumbstick, but it's if you press the button down. In the throes of a battle, when you're fighting off a series of bad guys who wanna see a four people can wear one dude's skin, having the map overlay pop up because you rolled and pressed a bit too hard is friggin' infuriating. And of course, mouse and keyboard works pretty well, and while archery is functional with the controller, it can be highly advantageous to play someone who is mained as a ranged character with the mouse and keyboard. But here's the thing, games in this genre really hinge on an almost magnetic set of gameplay mechanics built to keep you engaged in that amazing feeling of traveling to far off places and then killing everyone there to the betterment of your people, or at least your skill and item list. And while the game is actually fairly long with three large campaigns, the hunts, the ability to play co-op, leveling up all the town locations like the smithy and equipment merchant, which also raises their creation level, and also enchanting your items with special runes. It sadly, as a whole package, didn't do that much for me. And I think much of it is the equipment system. While weapon pinatas are the normal expectations of titles like this, like every enemy you split open seems to have been holiday stuffed with an assortment of primary colored items, much of that does not happen here. Now, some items do drop, but mostly it's crafting materials. And to be honest, the 577th time you see a fucking block of wood fall out of a troll enemy, it's about as impressive as the first time, which means not at all. It just doesn't hook the gamer. And since this is a big change for this kind of genre, it doesn't seem as developed as it should be. And honestly, the game has a really weird design conceit. It basically means that you're gonna return two locations time and time again for hunts, but that's gonna start about the second or third level, which means you're gonna be seeing a lot of repetitive locations pretty quickly. Now, for some people, I can see this actually being totally fine. I can see them jumping into this crafting system and really liking it. For me, it has some issues. Fun factor. Okay, listen, this has to be the first game I've ever played that was built with its own fucking safety belt. I can't remember a game playing it this safe as much as this title does. From the skills to the combat itself, and even with the excellent but still somewhat overly trite environmental dangers like the possibility of freezing to death if you don't find fire in the snow, the game just has so much going for it, but it does almost nothing with it. Crafting items feels unrewarding after all the grinding and upgraded needed. Skills don't really pay off visually compared to the competition, though they do some wicked damage. Everything just feels tit for tat. If anything, it was the enemies that I liked in this game, from goblins riding giant boars to religiously chanting steel-encrusted knights to creepy troll witches cackling like Rucklebone from the movie Legend. I can say that if anything, I just really enjoyed going to another place in the hopes of fighting off something new, it just didn't always turn out that way and certainly didn't reward me with some new piece of equipment I liked. Now, as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch again rating scale with rent replaced by deep, deep sale for PC titles, which this is, and sadly what the score is, a deep, deep sale. Now that doesn't mean it's bad. In many ways, it can be a very enjoyable title with a good amount of depth, at least when it comes to total completion time or fulfilling the requirements for the God skills. Throughout the entire time I was playing the game, it just felt like its main focus was always just being competent. And technically, when it comes to games, competent isn't good. Competent isn't even a good word when you think about it. Listen, my parenting skills are competent. It doesn't mean you want me taking your kids to the grand opening of Frozen Paintball Palace. But unfortunately, that's pretty much what we've got right here. So as always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Maybe check out Twitter or Patreon. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Peace out and enjoy your weekend.